Hi, I'm going to show you how to derive the formula for the period of a simple small angle pendulum. So a simple pendulum consists of a small mass piece of string connected to a pivot point and uh, a mass that is concentrated at the end. Okay, a distribution of mass would be what's called a physical pendulum. I'm not going to go over that now. This would be a simple pendulum. All the almost all the matter is at one end of this uh, of this device. Okay, and let's say that it's uh, released from rest at some angle from vertical, and we're going to predict how long it takes to swing back and forth. That would be the the period of the pendulum. Okay, so um, it's, this starts as a force problem. So we want to uh, if we're dealing with forces, we draw a free body diagram first. So I would assert that there is a tension force up to the left, and there is a weight force down. And that's it. Okay, maybe a little bit of drag force, but we'll ignore that. So the in this situation, because it's moving in an arc of a circle, it makes sense to use a uh, polar coordinate system where we look at the tangential and the centripetal components of the forces. So I'm gonna, at this, at this instant, tangential is this direction, and then centripetal would be in the, in the uh, direction that the tension force is, okay? So we, uh, we're kind of using a rotated coordinate system, and that's, that's fine, we can deal with that. So it turns out that we don't have to look in the centripetal direction. You know, the tension force obviously keeps it moving in a circle, but in terms of tangential forces, the tension force doesn't exist. And that's where all of the action is uh, with the pendulum speeding up and slowing down. So um, let's write down, even though it's a two-dimensional problem, we're gonna deal with one dimension. So the tangential forces add up to M times A tangential. Okay, so I need to get the component of this uh, weight force that is tangential. Okay, so so what I really need is this angle right here in order to develop a trig function. And that angle happens to correspond to this angle right here, the angle that the pendulum makes from vertical. Okay, so we have the weight forces in the negative tangential direction. Typically we uh, have, you know, counterclockwise motion is positive, um, clockwise is negative. And so the, at this moment, the weight force is clockwise in the, in the negative direction. So it would be minus, W, and then we're looking at this piece right here. That's the um, the tangential portion, and that's opposite that angle, and so it becomes associated with the sine function. Okay, so minus the magnitude times the sine of that angle will be equal to m. And I'm going to be lazy here. I'm just going to go ahead and drop the tangential because we're just dealing with one dimension. You don't have to worry about that. Okay, next thing is to throw in the formula for weight force, which is mg. So minus uh, the mass times g times sine of the angle from vertical equals the mass times the acceleration. Okay, we can certainly do a little bit of math here, and we can get rid of the mass. So already we know that whatever happens to this pendulum is independent of the mass. Okay, we haven't gotten a solution to the period of the pendulum yet, but we know that the m disappears is on both sides of Newton's second law. So we end up with this. Okay, now, this is more, it seems simple, but it's more complicated than it might seem at first. And the reason is because the, these are both changing, okay? The angle from vertical changes and the acceleration changes. So we have, you know, we have a, a dynamic force, dynamic acceleration, changing angle, all the things are continuously changing. So this little equation here is actually uh, a pretty complicated one to solve. Some, actually some pretty advanced mathematics to, to solve. So what we do is we assume that the angle is small. Okay, So small angle typically may, might mean you know 30 degrees or less. Anything beyond that we, we might run into trouble. So if the angle is small then, um, so let's write that down. So if theta small then sine theta is approximately equal to theta, okay? So that, uh, that claim, and plus the definition of angle, so uh, in radians, would be arc length, okay, over the radius, which in this case is the length of the pendulum. So that's L, and then this distance here 
would be, we'll call that S, the, the arc length. So definition of the radian, arc length over, over radius. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna, instead of, I'm gonna replace sine theta with the arc length over, over the radius. So I end up with minus little g, S over L equals the acceleration. And then typically what we'll do is we'll re we rearrange this, lump the constants together. So G and L are constants, and I end up with this. Okay, but this actually isn't a lot better because it's still a changing acceleration situation. This, this distance here is changing. Let's say I release it from rest. The acceleration would be one value, and then as it moves, that uh, this distance gets smaller, and therefore the acceleration gets gets smaller. So it's complicated, but uh, so this requires some advanced mathematics as well. So this is really tough. This is sort of tough. It uh, requires some uh, math, which which is called differential equations. So for those of you who know some calculus, acceleration is second derivative of position, and so. We solve. We try to come up with a general solution to the position as a function of time, which we can get. Uh, but ultimately, what's important to us is when we um, when we solve this, we can get an angular frequency to this oscillation, and therefore the period. So, um, with a little bit of, I'm obviously skipping some steps here, but it's uh, math beyond the scope of what I teach. So, uh, the angular frequency will just be the square root of this constant here. So minus square root, get rid of the minus sign, square root of little g over the length of the pendulum. And then you can use the relationship between uh, period and angular frequency to derive the formula for period. And I think that's more intuitive. That's what you would get from a stopwatch measurement. Okay, this, okay, we don't, um, you know, it'd be kind of weird to, uh, to you know, try to measure angles and stuff like that. This is you know, angular frequency. And it really isn't even have anything to do with this angle here, which is kind of weird. It's, it's actually the angular frequency of the sine or cosine function that describes the position as a function of time, okay? It's not how, uh, how rapidly this angle is changing. That's actually a different thing. Okay, anyway, so uh, the period is two pi over this angular frequency. And so I get two pi times square root of the length of the pendulum divided by little g. Okay, so there's uh, a useful formula. This, I'd say this, you know, this one's useful. And this one's, of course, useful if you're trying to describe the position and acceleration as a function of time, or even the velocity, uh, exactly this this number comes comes into play. If you want to predict what you get on your stopwatch, then you'd have that. So I'm going to give, just do one, one quick example that I think is kind of interesting. And that is the length, if we set the length equal to one meter, what happens? Okay, so if uh, if we throw in L of 1 meter, throw in G of 9.8, what do we get? Okay, so let's write that down. 2 pi times square root of a length of 1 meter divided by 9.8. And I get just a little bit more than 2. So it's almost uh, exactly 2. So, you know, um, it takes one, if this is 1 meter long, it takes uh, one second to swing to the other side, another second to swing back. Okay, um, so kind of maybe kind of a coincidence. In fact, I think there was at some point some discussion of you know defining the meter and the second in terms of each other uh, due to this um, due to this kind of uh, interesting coincidence. Of course, it's it's problematic because this number is going to change from place to place. So that's of course why we don't define the meter and the second in terms of each other each other this way. But if you're in a pinch, maybe maybe it works for you. Okay. Um, that's it. So thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.